blade and quill. Hello and welcome. This is part six of the video series on Krita's tools. Last week, I showed you how to use the cage mode of the transform tool and how to set up your anchor points around your pictures, how to add anchors to an already existing setup, and how to deform the image using the move and rotate functionalities. Today, we are going to talk about the liquify tool. Before to start, we need to activate the transform tool by clicking on the icon located in the toolbox. Or you can use the Ctrl T shortcut to get to it. In the tool options docker, we are going to locate the icon that looks like a water drop. This is the liquify mode of the transform tool. When you click on it, a new set of actions appears. Along the side, you will see five icons or buttons that I will refer as the tools during the tutorial. Each of these tools can be adjusted using the four sliders that you see here. Depending on what you are trying to accomplish with your transformation, you can adjust the tools with a single slider or a combination of all of them. Click in this box to reverse an action or stroke. You can also hold the control key on your keyboard to activate the functionality. These two buttons right next to the size and amount sliders when activated will configure your brush to be pressure sensitive. Finally, you can switch between the build up mode and the wash mode by clicking in this box. The flow slider is not activated under the build-up mode. To be able to use it, you will need to switch to the wash mode. As mentioned earlier, we have two modes of painting. The build-up mode and the wash mode. Let's look at the build-up mode first. The build-up mode keeps adding deformations, one on the top of the other, until it cannot go any further. So that you can better understand what this means, I am going to show you what happens when the tool is used to its maximum potential. To do this, I'm going to use the Move tool and push several parts of this image to the right side of the screen until you cannot recognize the image anymore. When you cannot recognize this image, as it is obviously the case here, or when there is nothing left, you have reached what I believe is called the maximum point of deformation. Let's get to the wash mode. Now, as you can see, the flow slider is activated. I am going to use the same settings as before and repeat my little experiment. This way, I will be able to compare the two modes equally. The wash mode normalizes the deformation. This means that the software is going to work very hard to deform the image gradually while trying to preserve its integrity. And it is going to do so within a range. Now let's imagine that zero represents no deformation and five is the maximum limit the software will go before the image loses its integrity and becomes distorted beyond recognition. As you deform your image, Krita is going to keep working within the range and is never going to go over its maximum parameter. So whatever changes you will make, you will always see that you are deforming a cat even when you are getting close to the maximum limit of deformation, while earlier, when we reached the maximum point of deformation in the build-up mode, nothing was left for us to recognize. Using the same setting as earlier, I am pushing the image toward the right side of the screen. 
As you can see, nothing much is happening. Now let's spice things up a little and increase the values in the amount slider. Here, the bigger the value, the stronger the distortion, hence it speeds things up. I am going to set the amount to 1.8 first. As you can see, we are starting to see some uh, significant deformation. But I'm sure we can do some more damage. Uh, let's try a bigger amount. Ah, here we go. We are getting serious. As you can see, even though I am deforming the image right in front of you, you have no problem seeing that I'm working on a cat. So I hope these two demonstrations have helped you understand the difference between the two modes of painting. Each of the tools that I am about to show you can be adjusted using the sliders and functionalities located to their right. Now please keep in mind that you will use and adjust the tools the exact same way under the build-up mode and the wash mode. So in order to not waste your time and repeat myself, I will only teach you how to manipulate the tools under one mode. Now let's look at the tools. This tool is not about moving the image from one side of a canvas to the other. This is a tool that will allow you to move the pixels of your image under your brush strokes. Let me show you. If I move the brush down, the pixels are going down. If I move the brush up, they are going up. Wherever I go, the pixels follow. The scale tool is usually used to grow or inflate an image. Now if you rather shrink your image, click on the reverse box or hold the control key. The rotate tool will allow you to twist the image clockwise. To manipulate the image counterclockwise, click on the reverse box or hold the control key. The offset tool will allow you to shift the image to the right of the stroke direction. And let me show you very quickly what I mean by that. If I move my brush down, the image moves to the left. If I move my brush up, the image moves to the right. If I move my brush toward the left side of the screen, the image goes up. If I move my brush toward the right side of the screen, the image moves down. The Undo tool allows you to erase the actions of other tools. Here I have made a lot of changes. I am going to paint over my image to undo the changes. Of course, uh, keep painting until you are happy. You may undo just a few actions or you may undo everything and get back to the original picture. That's your choice. You can use the sliders to quickly increase or decrease the strength of your tools. Or you can also type an amount directly and click enter. You can also use the up and down arrows on the side to make more precise adjustments. The size slider allows you to adjust the size of your brush. Obviously, a big size brush will move big parts of your image. 
while a small size brush will move tiny pieces. You are not limited to the slider and side arrows to change the size of your brush. You can also adjust its size by holding the shift key as you move your mouse up or down, pressing the left button with your index finger. You may be wondering, uh, what are the best settings? I am afraid that I cannot really help you here. It will all depend on what you are trying to achieve. Your job will be to try and test until you find what works best for your current project. This slider adds strength to your brush. The more you increase its value, the stronger the deformation. I am going to use a move tool and use different settings. This way you will be able to see how sensitive it is. First, I am going to increase the size of my brush. This way you'll see better. And now I'm going to start with an amount of 0.6. See how drastic the deformation is? Okay, that means that 0.6 is way too powerful, so let's try uh, 0.2. We need to reset the image first. Now look, the deformation is less dramatic, but I'm still not happy with it. It's still too strong for my taste. I am going to decrease the value even more and try uh, 0.1. Ah, here we go. That's much better. The deformation is uh, much less drastic. So now that I have found the perfect value for this project, I am going to stick to it. The slider is grayed out under the build-up mode, so we'll get back to it later. Earlier when using the brush size slider, I said that the bigger the value, the bigger the deformation. Here it's quite the opposite. Large spacing value will make small alteration. While smaller values will make bigger ones. Now let me reset the image and set the spacing to its maximum. As you can see here, almost nothing is happening. This is because here, spacing is not about the space between pixels that are laid on the canvas, but about the space between two sequential dabs, meaning the space between a series of quick motions I am applying over the picture to deform it. I would advise you to start with a low value such as 0.1 and then work your way up. Repeat what you did with the amount slider and play around with the settings until you find what works best for you. If you click on this button or hold the control key on your keyboard to activate it, you will reverse an action or stroke meaning that if you use the scale tool to grow areas of your image, by activating this button, you will now shrink these areas. I cannot demonstrate these buttons. The reason is that anything I may do with my stylus will look exactly the same on your screen as if I were using my mouse. What I'm trying to say here is that I cannot demonstrate pressure in a video. You will have to experience it yourself with your stylus. The only thing you need to remember is this. Clicking this button next to the brush size slider will configure your brush to be pressure sensitive. This means that the more pressure you will put on your tablet, the larger the brush size will be. Same thing here. If you click and activate the button next to the amount slider, the more pressure you will exert on the tablet, the stronger the brush amount will be. We are now ready to look at the flow slider under the wash mode. 
In Quilla's manuals, they say that the flow shows how fast the deformation limit is reached. So let me try to explain, and please feel free to correct me in the comment areas if I am wrong. I think that by deforming the image, we are stressing the image's integrity and plasticity. As we add uh, more deformation, we increase the stress on the pixels, leading to a quality loss of the image. So basically what we are doing is that we are creating a wavy effect and the image begins to flow. And since we are in the wash mode, all of this is normalized within a range between a zero and a maximum point. Now let's see what the flow uh, is doing. Let's see the flow in action. I am going to test the different flow values. Well, okay, that was interesting. <laughs> I will not lie to you, I never ever ever use this slider, just like I barely use the wash mode. So I really don't see a use for me, but if you see one for you, please uh, feel free to use it. All right, we are almost done. You see this little spider icon on the side? This is called the recursive transform. When you click on it, you can apply your deformation to all the layers within a group, as uh, if they were one layer, basically. Here, as you can see, we have several layers that are arranged within one group. Now, very important, you must click on the group layer for it to work. Now let's do some transformation. As you can see, everything is transforming uh, nicely. Now let's say that you decide that one layer within the group should not be transformed. So go back to your group and open it. Locate the layer that you don't want to transform and lock it. So for this uh, demonstration, I am going to lock my line art. Now close the group. And like that, this way the layer is active or click on it to make it active and see what happens. Everything is moving except the line art. That's pretty neat. All right, we made it and I am so sorry it was a long video. I hope that you are going to try the liquify tool because it's a lot of fun. I'll see you next week and we'll talk about the last mode of a transform tool, the mesh. Until then, have a great week and have fun painting. See you next Monday. Bye.